Hello, my name is Andrew Poliak and I'm CTO and Vice President of Product and Innovation at Panasonic Automotive Systems America. And I'm joined here by Sishi Payne, who leads our product management for our in-vehicle infotainment platform. Right, right. Hi, Andrew. Yes. So I am on the product management side of things, uh, supporting both advanced engineering and product planning, specifically the e-cockpit domain in uh, in-vehicle infotainment. So Sishi, you've been instrumental in what we've been doing with uh, Google around creating and using our platform as a reference design for Android to be running in an automotive application. And we've really seen since we began doing this platform, Android really take off. But we found that we can't just go it alone and it can't just be based on the operating system itself. But as an ecosystem platform enabler to allow people to move from mobile applications to in-vehicle applications very easily. So you've been really building up a really robust third-party ecosystem. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the work you've been doing with some of those partners? So as you mentioned, a part of our effort is to incorporate the latest technologies into our design and build strategic relationships uh, with various third parties. So one company that we've been working with is Fox Factory, uh, where they've actually developed a digital suspension system, and they're actually using using SkipGen as their uh, IVI platform. So what they're doing, they're actually allowing the end customer to be able to change their suspension settings of the vehicle using the actual IVI. Wow. So what's an example? So it's something like, you know, I'm driving down the road and I go to go off road and it, I can just set my off road setting right from my entertainment system. Right, right. Yeah. Directly from your infotainment system, you can actually just set off road or trail road, uh, whichever settings they have available. And another thing that's very interesting is that we do have sensor information that's available as well. So the end customer is actually able to understand the life or, or understand their shock value, anything that's going on with the actual suspension system. Oh, that's great. So maybe it can automatically adjust for, you know, if it starts to sense that the road may be slippery or there may be some other uh, settings that they can optimize the suspension for it can do it automatically. Correct. That's correct. Oh, that's great. And, and any other any other partners you've been engaged with or anything else you want to talk about? Yes. So we've also been engaged with uh, Sirius XM on our SkipGen platform, both our SkipGen 1 and SkipGen 2. Now on our SkipGen 2, we're actually working closely with Sirius XM on their 360L, which is their latest uh, generation of their uh, Sirius XM. A module and with that the actual customer is able to remain connected uh, to the IP radio say for instance if they lose coverage where they are they're actually able to continue listening to their channels and not lose any information. Uh, was there any other radio type applications that you've been working with? Uh, we've also been working with Xperia on our latest Skip Gen, which is our Skip Gen 2, uh, for the HD radio. So that has been uh, some really good incorporated activity, both within Xperia and Panasonic. Yeah, I think we, we've really engaged that ecosystem. And I've watched all these applications and the amount we can show OEMs to really jumpstart and accelerate their development, where they're not spending you know months or years and countless amount of dollars to get some of these applications running and it's ready to go to shorten their development time cycles to increase kind of their user experience and i think it's been great yeah so i do want to know uh, andrew when it comes to the safety elements we mentioned spider where we have multiple operating systems running simultaneously so i do want to understand more about our safety elements when we're looking into hypervisors or ways to actually accomplish that yeah, you're right. Um, you know, one of the big changes, Android's dominating the infotainment space, but the class of processing power being used for these, uh, these products in the in-vehicle environment has grown so large that it can start doing uh, encapsulating and up-integrating other vehicle functions. So we're seeing the emergence of these cockpit domain controllers that will add the, the, the brains for not only the infotainment, but passenger displays, gaming, uh, interior rear view monitoring systems that can bring up live video feeds on the, the mirror, uh, cluster integration. It already had backup camera integration, but having other sensors that feed right into the infotainment. So what we're, what we're seeing in that realm is that you'll get into an environment that will have mixed criticality, meaning you have core items that require safety certification 
blended in the exact same system as items that will have more entertainment functions and applications that you use more for entertainment than safety. So there'll be a requirement to merge these system and not lose track of the safety, the security, making sure that it's uh, not susceptible to viruses or potential uh, threats and attacks. So what we've done is we've worked closely with our partner, Open Synergy, who has developed a technology that's called a hypervisor. And a hypervisor allows you to run multiple operating systems at the same time on a single chip. And those operating systems can have uh, real-time performance and capabilities that are required in these safety systems. So to make it easy, if you think about an instrument cluster, when you put the vehicle in park and you see that P on your cluster, you need to know that it rendered that properly and it is indicating that the vehicle is actually in park before you let off your, your brake. And that's exactly the type of systems you have to find and develop in such a way that there's redundancy and safety and there's independent uh, audits of those safety mechanisms to make sure that it's qualified as safe. So they have something in automotive called automotive safety integrity level and typically that level is level B to make sure that those telltales warn you if there's ever a misrendering or uh, a misindication that you're in park or the turn indicator's on when in actuality it isn't. So and we've enabled that in such a way that we've also pre-built that technology to collaborate and work directly with Android. So uh, in, in the summer, there were some announcements that were made from Open Synergy about pre-integrating that hypervisor technology into Android, and that's exactly what we're using on Spider. Right, right, and that's awesome, and also with the telltale failure detection. So Sishi, we have this great ecosystem. We have the technology to enable it not only to build a rich experience, but also be safe. But what do you think, you know, how do you envision what the cabin of the future is going to look like? What's my car going to be like in 2024, 2025, maybe sooner? So as far as the future of uh, IVI in the vehicle, I see more so a connected vehicle. Uh, I see a vehicle with many displays, maybe 10 to 15 displays. I do see that happening in the near future. Uh, also the ability for the passengers to be able to stream from their devices or from another application simultaneously. So you have two different, you know, movies being played at the same time or two different videos uh, of some sort. So I definitely see the ability to have uh, independent use cases depending on the passengers that are actually in the vehicle. Um, I also see the ability to actually connect with other vehicles uh, that are you know, outside from your vehicle. So I do see that being available in the near future as well. Awesome, yeah, when you said those uh, 11 or 12 or 15 displays, some people might think, oh, how will you put all these displays in it? And then I started thinking about what are examples. So, uh, you know, we already talked about the IVI and then also the instrument cluster, but the head up display that may be uh, projected as augmented reality on your windshield or that same AR could be uh, pushed onto your side windows that you can have kids interacting with the environment, knowing what's going on. Um, you know, maybe transparent. One thing that I, I hate is when I come to a stop sign and maybe somebody's in that blind spot of what's called the A-pillar, that, that uh, portion of your vehicle that's blocked off for the, the metal that safely reinforces it. Um, maybe a display in there that can all of a sudden give you visibility of what's behind that A-pillar. Backup cameras that may be pushed into the, uh, the rear view mirror. So it's not just a mirror, it's a smart mirror. Uh, and as you said, games, music, but uh, lots of different technologies that can be incorporated into these uh, vehicles of the future. Right, right. And so I do have a, I do want to move on into the acoustics and the video and the sound uh, portion of things. So is there anything that you've been discussing lately in terms of the future of acoustics and voice? Oh, yeah. You know, we did a podcast in December, uh, really focusing on that particular aspect. And that is, what is the acoustic uh, environment going to look like in the future of in-cabin uh, applications? So of course you have things like uh, active noise cancellation. So the ability in the past, active noise cancellation was really 
uh, isolated to targeting problem frequencies. Like if you're locking up a torque converter uh, at lower, RP, uh, lower RPMs to get a rattle out of the car, or if you have cylinder deactivation that sometimes causes a boom, you don't want when you pull into a, a stoplight to kind of have a lot of noise in the cabin. So originally we were doing a lot of acoustics around reducing those problem frequencies. But in the future, as the cars, they try to get lighter and get more fuel efficient. Uh, you'll get rid of more sound deadening material to make those vehicles lighter. And that means you don't want to have an uncomfortable environment related to noise. So we start doing active noise cancellation that removes road noises, whether it's different types of roads that you may be driving over, or if it's just outside sound or wind noise that may be coming, whether it's in a convertible or not, all the way to these sound bubbles where you'll be watching a movie or interacting with an assistant and the person sitting next to you won't hear that content. They'll just hear their own isolated sound zone of, of audio. So really acoustics is an area that's going, uh, it's getting a lot of development, a lot of activity, and we're really leading that charge. So I really think the vehicle interior of the future and the cabin of the future is gonna be really exciting. Well, Sishi, thank you so much for spending this time with me today, and it's been a pleasure, and I'm really excited about all the great work you've been doing with the team and all the enablement you had, and I know there's so many more that we can't talk about yet, um, but I'm excited to see what the future is gonna to bring for uh, our platform and what we'll have to announce next.